What would it take to end poverty, eradicate polio, and help billions live better? This morning, Microsoft founder and philanthropist Bill Gates released his annual Gates Foundation letter. In it, he lays out three myths and looks at how the world is conquering its challenges. We're pleased to welcome Bill Gates back to Studio 57. Welcome. Great to be here. Uh, you start this uh, letter, your annual letter, by saying, by almost any measure, the world is better than it has ever been. Yet at the same time, Oxfam has a new report out this morning suggesting that 85 people in the world, of which I assume you're one, own as much wealth as a half of the world's population. Connect those two ideas, which might seem to some in conflict. Well, uh, people are living longer lives than ever before. We've got uh, the number of children who die uh, down. We need to do more, and certainly taking uh, uh, philanthropy, taking um, uh, the wealth that I'm lucky enough to have, and applying it on behalf of those people uh, to invent vaccines, get them out there, uh, that's a very just thing. We want to lift those people up. Uh, we want to get the child to death rate uh, down from the 5% uh, that is now, uh, down to the level it was in the United States in 1980, 1.6%. And, uh, it's going to take some of that wealth and a lot of ingenuity to get it there. Income inequality is a big theme. It'll be the theme at Davos, where, where you will be. Uh, when you look at the effort you're making, you seem to emphasize that three myths that we must worry about. One is that the poor are doomed to be poor. What do you mean? Well, there's been really mind-blowing progress uh, during my lifetime, uh, where uh, back in 1955, there were a few rich countries, but overwhelmingly, countries were poor. Uh, today, more countries are middle income. They've moved up, uh, countries like Mexico, Brazil, China. And so we have remaining poor countries. In the next 20 years, if we're focused on it, we'll have that down to a very small number, less than 10. And only by knowing the progress we've made, though, will we dedicate ourselves to this mm. effort. And you look at the headlines, you might get the impression we're not making progress. And when are we supposed to report the gradual improvement that's taking place? Instead, you hear about the setbacks, the tornado, uh, not the, the wonderful results of, mm. of lifting these countries up. You want to create a mindset that things are getting better and we have to continue that effort. Yeah, and look at where it's gone well, uh, being willing to put the resources and effort in uh, to match uh, the countries where it's gone spectacularly well. You even say that extreme poverty can be solved, you say, by 2035, which is an amazing number to think about. Mm -hmm. If we use ingenuity, what kind of ingenuity are you thinking about talking about? Well, we have to take uh, science uh, and help the poorest. For example, to get rid of a disease like malaria, uh, we'll take new medicines, new vaccines, uh, to get their farming productivity, which is a third of U.S. farming productivity, uh, up close to that level so they can feed themselves, send their kids to school. Uh, they need new and better seeds. A lot of that ingenuity comes from the richer countries, mm -hmm. uh, governments, philanthropists. Uh, but we can see that, that this is possible. And the kind of negative mindset people have that poor countries are stuck, that's going to hold us back. That's why that myth Mm -hmm. uh, is a disaster. You talk about polio particularly, and you say we're getting closer than ever to completely eradicating it. But then you look at polio vaccinators being targeted mm -hmm. in Pakistan. You look at Syria, where I've spent a lot of time, where uh, there is a resurgence now of polio. How much of a role does conflict, or how much of an obstacle is conflict in terms of the work that you're trying to do? Well, the, we do need to get to zero cases, because then it won't come back to places like Syria and Somalia, uh, where we had outbreaks last year. The two tough countries are Pakistan and Nigeria. And as you said, uh, there's violence. There's a misunderstanding about the vaccine, uh, thinking that it's an evil plot of the West. So we have to get the truth out. We have to work with religious mm -hmm. leaders, anybody who's trusted, uh, and change the attitude, because at the end of the day, this is about kids who die or, or get paralyzed. And with a little bit of uh, great work and a little bit of luck over the next couple of years, we'll get uh, down to zero cases. Mm. A couple of points. One, the other myths that you want to make sure that people understand are myths. Foreign aid is a waste and that saving lives leads to overpopulation. Speaking of saving lives, what has been the dramatic reduction in the death of children under five? Well, uh, 
Back in uh, 1990, it was about 13 percent of all children died before the age of five, and now we're down at about five percent. Uh, so that's huge, unbelievable progress, and that's uh, getting vaccines out to them uh, when they're born, having a, a good birth care attendant. Um, and we can go so much further uh, if we build on that, that mm. progress. And so, you know, I, I think you, you just see disasters, you see negative things. The headlines never tell you uh, what I think is the greatest achievement of, of mankind is, is that unbelievable injustice of a mother having a, a child mm. die. I know Seattle is your hometown. I'm wondering if you're aware that Seattle Seahawks are going to the Super Bowl. Absolutely. It's, and, uh, and my friend Paul Allen and the whole city uh, are just all revved up. I was wondering if Richard Sherman reminds you of yourself with his humility. <laughs> uh, I hear he's, he's very sharp. I yeah, bet he went to it sounded Stanford. like he was pretty excited to win. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> Bill Gates he, could, he could take a page from the Bill Gates book. I'm just saying. Good to see you. Good to Thank see you. you so, so much. Thank you.